So assuming you saw the fight, the, the big fight. fight. Oh, the big fight, yeah. McGregor Mayweather, what a fucking fight that was. It was incredible. Was. Definitely a fight between yeah. two people. A fight that happened. Oh, yeah, definitely happened yeah. in the past. <laughs> when we're talking now, oh my God, I can't believe that... Floyd Mayweather... Won in the... 10th round via technical knockout. So yeah, you think people are going to buy that we recorded this ahead of time? We, we don't know for a fact that Mayweather won in the 10th round. Defo. So unless you've been living under a rock that has neither internet access or is within earshot of an Irishman, you probably know by now that Floyd Mayweather beat the living piss out of Conor McGregor in that boxing match, and in the process became the boxer in modern history with the longest recorded undefeated streak. Floyd Mayweather dropping the early rounds has stopped Conor McGregor. However, as impressive as that feat is, it still falls way short of a similar feat accomplished by an ancient boxer called Melon Comus of Carrier, who not only was undefeated his entire career, but also never threw a single punch. Before we get to Melon Comus and his career, we should probably talk about how the ancient sport of boxing differed from the modern version we have today. While functionally similar in that it involved two men trying to punch each other's skeletons to pieces, there were a few differences that made it altogether more dangerous. What were the differences? Well, one of the main ones is that there was no ring, or no weight classes. Anyone of any size could compete, and you would basically fight in a roughly defined area on whatever surface they had available, and there was no time limits either, so it was just two men punch each other until one of you either goes down permanently or admits you've been defeated. So there were no, t there were no time limits, there were no count outs, and you basically fought until you either knocked out or went, well, oh, that guy's better. I'm guessing a lot of people died. Not many people did, now, But if you died, you were seen as the winner. Because not in boxing, I think in Pancrashen, which is another combat sport, because dying mean you get, didn't give up the hardest. There was actually a documented example of one Olympic winner dying and getting the medal. He was uh, having his... Um, he'd been a choked in a chokehold, and rather than giving up, you can look this up, I don't know the guy's name, because it's a weird Greek name I can't pronounce, but as he was in a chokehold, he jumped, kicked the leg of the guy behind him and snapped his ankle. The guy gave up and tapped out, but as he was tapping out, as he sh the shock, he broke the guy's neck, and he was given the winner because he said, like, the whole point is he didn't give up even though he died. So he didn't give up the hardest anyone has never given up. And the guy's like, well, he's dead. Why does he deserve the medal? Like, we well, didn't give up. Like, he chose to die instead of, yeah, you gave up with a broken ankle. He didn't give up and fucking died. That is how it's, that's how it's done. So the way they framed it is he didn't give up the hardest, so he wins. <laughs> Oh my god, this can't be happening to me! It was obviously very dangerous, they didn't even have gloves, they had um, rough leather straps that were put over their knuckles, or they could fight bare knuckle if they wanted to, or they could wrap their fists in ropes. It was really dependent on like what they felt more comfortable doing, which meant that there wasn't as many headshots, because um, uh, obviously you can't really punch the human skull with such little padding on your knuckles, so there wasn't really many deaths. It was just obviously like, you fight until one of you gives up. So they, matches could take literally all day. There was a case where boxers would fight from like morning till night, just slugging each other because none of them would give up and obviously none of them were getting knocked out, which it's really hard to punch someone in the head and knock them out. So do they have any rules in place then? There was only a couple. I think one of them was um, no grappling, because that was reserved for wrestling and pancrashing events. And another one was like no biting, no eye gouging. So could they kick? No, they couldn't kick either now. But you could punch when they were down. Oh. You could throw people to the ground and punch them there. In fact, you were encouraged to punch people when they're down, so obviously that's weakness, and weakness should be punished and exploited. There were very few rules, but the rules that were in place were basically to differentiate it from the other combat sports like wrestling and pancrashing. Like wrestling, obviously, the modern wrestling. Pancrashing was a mixture between um, boxing and wrestling that is similar to MMA we have today. And it was more brutal in that the only thing I think that was outright banned was gouging the eyes. Ball shots were entirely legal, as they were in the boxing, because obviously, you fought in the nude, you see a guy's weak point, if he's not guarding that, that's his own fucking problem. <laughs> As weight classes weren't really a thing back then, the sport inevitably became dominated by the largest, most physically powerful men. And most boxing matches simply devolved into two hunks of animalistic fury, beating each other with the clubbed hooves of meat they had at the ends of their arms. This isn't to say defensive boxing wasn't a thing, it just wasn't all that common. If, if there's no weight classes, surely it's just dominated by the biggest guy who throws the hardest punch? Mostly, yeah. Most of the famous, like, ancient Greek boxers were just the biggest guy. I must break you. And I think there are documented cases where two boxers agreed, like, we're not going to solve this, 
So let's just stand in the middle of the ring and just punch each other. Like you, I get one punch, you get one punch until one of us gives up or he's knocked out. And that was a way they used to solve boxing matches when they couldn't decide like, who the winner was. Defensive boxing was a thing, but obviously because of the fact there was no weight classes, it only, only exceptionally defensive boxers could make it, and Melly Camus was one of those. So he was one of the defensive ones? He was ultra defensive. He invested every stat point he ever earned into <laughs> defense and evasion. He was a tank. Yeah, if he was in like, he was min-max to fuck. He had no attack stat, but maximum defense and evasion. He was that dick in Dark Souls who gets the heaviest armor, maximum stamina, and just rolls everywhere. You couldn't fucking touch him. <gasps> Rolling help. Uh -huh. It helps. And he won basically until people just gave up. That was his whole shtick. He said he never threw a punch. He never just threw, stood there. Never threw a single punch. Right. He basically only blocked, dodged, and slipped punches. So his whole thing was that he'd stand with his guard up, he'd throw a punch, and he'd block it, he'd deflect it, move out of the way, but he'd never throw a punch back. He spent the entire time running around the ring, dancing, moving out of the way blocking all your punches until the opponent just gave the fuck up. I was going to say, you'd think that people would be like, well, I don't want to fight him because it's not going to be a good fight. But then you'd be like, what if I'm the guy who scores that punch? Yeah, what if I'm the guy who gets that hit? And then after about 20 minutes, like, for fuck's sake. Can you imagine just how frustrating that is? He, he just min-maxed his own life. He's like, no, nah, man, all defence. <laughs> Put it all into that. And it worked. What do you reckon would happen if he came up with a guy who min-maxed into all the punches? Uh, that is um, the unstoppable force meets the unmovable object. We'll never know because I don't think there was an ancient Greek boxer like that. Um, reportedly, he was never hit during his entire career. People land glancing blows, but there's never a single clean hit anyone ever got on him. And obviously with grappling not being allowed, the only thing you could do is obviously try and push him over or punch him. And with his defense that good, there's nothing you could really do. <laughs> Melon Commerce was reportedly so dedicated to the art of defense, he could reportedly hold his guard up for an entire day and was so fast he could slip punches like a cloud made of snakes. According to one source, he did throw a punch once in his career and got an instant knockout with it, but that's not as easily confirmed as some of his other stories. Obviously, this entire thing about Mellencamp is based on like thousand year old stories that were also based on hearsay and anecdotal evidence. So this, this is probably not the most historically accurate thing on this um, channel. Uh, one source does say he threw a punch once in anger after someone mocked him and he, got an, he knocked them out in one punch. But again, that's not really as well confirmed as or established as all the other shit we know about this guy. Hang on, isn't this a Simpsons episode? Yes, it is. You mean the episode where Homer becomes a heavyweight boxer? Yeah. And the one where they realise that like, you can't throw a punch, but you can sure as shit take one. So just stand there, and just take hits until the person gets so tired you can push them over. Was it based off that story? I'm not sure, but considering that the Simpsons have done everything, I won't be surprised it was just a coincidence. But it highlights how ridiculous <laughs> Melon Commerce was. That his tactic was seen as so absurd, a cartoon used it for a joke. Now, no matter how much he hits you, you don't do nothing, okay? You don't want to get drawn into a boxing match here. This is like, I know the, obviously the jumping off point of view, so this is Floyd Mayweather. The comparison is really apt, because that's what that guy's known for as well. Mayweather's known as being a really defensive boxer who only throws like a couple of punches. I think his fight with Manny Pacquiao was like, People were so bored of it because he just never did anything. He spent the entire match just blocking, throwing one or two punches. So this comparison is actually really apt. I think Floyd Mayweather's argument is that, like, why would I go out? You can make it flashy, but why would I ever risk getting punched? Do we have any idea what he looked like? Melon Camus, um, there's a couple of, I think, paintings of him on pottery, and that's about it, really. One of the few things we know is that he was very, very handsome. Um, a lot of poets of the day wrote long odes to how beautiful he was because obviously the fact he never got hit meant that he never had like his nose broken, he never had scratches put on his face, he didn't have a cauliflower ear from being grabbed and manhandled. And he also had apparently a really, really good body because he took his training so seriously and he'd do just like endless running and push-ups and stuff like that. I think we've figured out why he was so defensive. He wanted to keep his good looks. Yeah. Just, it's like, no, no, don't. That's what he was doing the entire time. He wasn't a boxer. He was a guy who just somehow found himself in the boxing ring. And he's like, no, don't touch my hair, man, no. He caught his reflection in the pool one day and was like, like, God, I'm stunning. And then someone started to fight with him and he just blocked everything <laughs> so quickly. And this guy was like, you'd, you'd make a great boxer or something. Yeah. He's like, I don't want a boxer. I can't throw a punch. It's like, it doesn't matter. Just do what you've been doing there. He's like, okay. He's like Johnny Bravo. Just like people trying to touch his hair. <laughs> just like, no. 
He learns kung fu or karate just so people can't touch his hair. That's what Melon Thomas was doing. Is that I'm so pretty, so astonishingly handsome, you're not touching this bod. That's what it all was like. You can't touch this. No. No. Can't touch this. So Floyd Mayweather may have just become the boxer with the longest undefeated streak in the modern recorded history of the sport, but he still ain't got shit on Melon Thomas. A boxer who ascended to the next level of combat by transcending the need to throw punches. A boxer so utterly dedicated to the art of defense, simply writing his name on a t-shirt now makes it bulletproof. So I reckon it's probably about time we talk about the fight. I don't think we should. There's not really much to say. Um, world champion, undefeated boxer, beats up guy who's had like three months of boxing training. So I don't understand why people are betting on Conor McGregor. <laughs> it's like, I get it, he's a good MMA fighter but he's not a fucking boxer and they were fighting in a boxing match. Undefeated boxer fights not undefeated man who doesn't yeah. box. Yeah, and that, and, that was, and that was billed as going to be like, ooh, who could possibly win? But surely that would have made more sense to have had undefeated boxer fights in something where he, against somebody who's better at something. That, that makes more sense as something that's going to be more interesting. Yeah, but Floyd, like... Floyd Mayweather booked the match. He just wanted his 50. Um, because of this, he's now got his 50 and 0, which um, breaks the record of Rocky Marciano. Who recently who held the record of 49 to 0. Can you count it as a proper fight when he's not fighting a proper boxer? Apparently they did, so he's now got 50 0. People have said that he might come out to do another one, but why would you? Because 51 0 doesn't sound as good as 50. 50 0 sounds better. So you don't want to talk about that then? Nah. nah. Let's not talk about that. Plus, it's just not fun because you know someone's in the comments going to create, oh, Conor McGregor could have won if he'd landed that left. It's like, yes. Yeah. I could have won if I landed one of my lucky left. <laughs> It's not fucking... I had a mate who genuinely thought Conor McGregor, he's like, oh, he's got a chance. And why? He's got a beard. How does that help? Because he's, he's manly. He's got a beard like him. He's got a beard. So, okay. So why is he going to win? So I don't like Floyd Mayweather. It's like, not a lot of people like him. He's the fucking best boxer in history. <laughs> so should we do like, comment, subscribe? Oh yeah, sure. If you enjoyed that video, why not leave a like or comment below with your favourite ancient Greek boxer. So I know I sure as shit have mine. Or subscribe for more content like this. You laugh at that, but I do actually have a lot of famous ancient Greek boxers and athletes. Because I actually was going to write a book on this fucking shit at one point until it all got deleted off the internet forever, and now I can't do it, anything with it. Which one was the book? It was going to be a book called Ass Kicking Athletes of Antiquity. Uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote an article about Melon Commerce for a website that no longer exists called Man Cave Daily. You can look this up. It's a real website. It was a, a subsidiary or an affiliate of CBS. I'm not sure which what exactly their relationship was with the company. I just know that CBS signed my checks and every now and again I get one. And I had an entire series of articles called Ask Kicking Athletes of Antiquity about this exact subject. And I think I had about a hundred of them in their archives, like some that had gone up, some that hadn't. And then the website just got fucking deleted off the internet. <laughs> they no longer exist. I think it's a private website now that you can't access, which means all of my articles are locked behind this wall that I can't get past. So then I was planning to turn them into a book about shit like Melon Commerce, like exploring the ancient Greeks and like their legends about some of the heroes they had in athletic events and discussing like the crazy shit they apparently did according to these second, third anecdotal sources that have just been passed on and passed on and Chinese whispered to the point. We know a story about a guy who was never hit once in a boxing match. Mm. And now it's all fucking gone up in smoke so I don't know where they are now. <laughs> Do you not have any hard copies? Uh, no. You can get a few of them. Uh, Internet Wayback Machine has a couple. Seeing as we're on the topic, as you wrote this article, I, I imagine within the last few days. Yes. Um, do you want to run people quickly through your research process? How did you find that? Oh, I read. I read a lot of stuff. I get asked a lot, and this I I don't get this question. I get asked a lot. Like, oh, Carl, where do you find all this interesting stuff? And do you know what my answer is? I read a lot. So did you have a note about this boxer ready for when a boxer was there was a particular? Yeah, I'd already written an article about it, but to find the original article, do you know what I did? Or the idea of the original article? I read. I read a book. I read a lot of books, actually. To the point now I can no longer read for pleasure. So, Do you have a base point? Do you have somewhere you start? What am I interested in today? Go on Google. Go on Google Scholar, Google Books. Uh, check my own book collection, um, which is rapidly growing to a point. It's nearly unsustainable. <laughs> uh, go back through my old archives. I've seen an interesting idea. I've got a notebook next to my desk that I write in there. I've got a phone app where I keep older article ideas that might work in the future. I think there's like 40 article ideas in there. I've got three separate documents on Google Docs, um, one with like a thousand links in it, one with about another five, 600, and one that's more recent is uh, full of fleshed out article ideas that I've yet to pitch. So for example, with this one, you would think, 
I want to do an article about a boxer, and you would yeah. just Google famous boxer, find one that's interesting, and then just keep going and yeah. going until and you just link, link hop until I find something I've not heard of. And then obviously you've got to do the classic. You've got to type, go onto Reddit, go onto Day I Learned, search their archives. It's been on there. If it's been on there and it's been shared a lot, you can guarantee what every other fucking fact website's covered this by now. Because that's what all these fact websites do. They go on there. What are the 10 most popular posts this week? Oh, okay. A link to Wikipedia. We don't need to spell check that. Perfect. So you always double check to make sure that the ones that you're using haven't been spread widely already? Yeah. 